welcome you here to New York. Well, thank you very much. I understand much. you're from here originally. I am, so and I'm delighted to be here in, uh, back in New York City. As huh? a matter of fact, I have uh, with me to this uh, afternoon uh, Susan Powers yes. from Lagunoff, uh -huh. who's a dear friend. I grew up in Morningside Heights. All right, good. And uh, we've known each other a very long time. She's married to an eminent physician. Good deal. Dr. Lagunoff, and uh, oh. so I'm just absolutely delighted. Thank you for My great, good me. pleasure. Let me introduce you, and welcome very much to Conversations. A pleasure to welcome the program. Um, Thomas Zung, he's got, he's a, he was an associate, architectural associate, I think it's fair to say friend and associate and very close associate with the eminent uh, mind of our time, if you ask my personal opinion, Buckminster Fuller, and he's carrying on the work and he's just come out with a recent book, let's let him see what it looks like, or relatively recent, but it's called Buckminster Fuller. Anthology for the Millennium, yes. New Millennium. Yes, an anthology for the New Millennium. Extremely interesting read, anthology of his writings, and I thank you very much for this addition to the literature about well, this you great for man. Me. Uh, I think it's very important because mm -hmm. the interesting thing about Bucky is, he, mm -hmm. and, and I have to admit that, that he is difficult to understand, uh, being the genius that he was. In fact, Time Magazine. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, tagged him with a wonderful saying, and that was the Leonardo da Vinci of our times. I think it's I think fair it's to say. Very, yeah. very apropos. Uh, about Bucky is that he had written 25 books, of mm -hmm. which 23 were published uh, commercially and two he did on his own. But what we did is for the new millennium, um, I took one chapter from each one of his books and asked people from around the world that mm -hmm. knew Bucky or had an influence of Bucky mm -hmm. to write an introductory chapter. Uh -huh. So we have people like um, uh, Sir Harry uh, Croto, who mm -hmm. won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry, mm -hmm. Buckminster Fullerene, he won that in 1996. Uh, we have people like Arthur C. Clarke, and everybody knows who he is, yeah. Space Odyssey of 2001, Steve Forbes, uh, Forbes yeah. Magazine. Yeah. And it's interesting, he wrote his introductory article when he was running for President of the United States. Yeah. So he took time out to do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have uh, Bucky's daughter, Allegra Fuller, mm -hmm. uh, people from Harvard, Dr. Arthur Loeb, some of them have uh, regretfully passed on, yeah. and uh, the uh, Pritzker Prize winner, Lord Norman Foster, very well-known architect, and Shoji Sadell, my partner, mm -hmm. and Bucky's daughter, Megan mm -hmm. Fuller. So we have a, a very august uh, grouping in there, and one uh, person that most people don't realize the depth of her character, and that's uh, Valerie Harper. Everybody yeah. knows there's this little yeah, ditzy yeah, thing, but yeah. she actually uh, help start Project Hunger uh -huh. with another mutual friend of Bucky's, and that's John Denver. Yeah. And so we actually have him uh, in there too. So it's a really a wonderful array mm -hmm. uh, of people that have contributed. Yeah. And one of the other people that who's who's uh, uh, I have a great fondness for is uh, is um, Glenn Olds. And the uh -huh. reason some people might know him mm -hmm. uh, is that he was the president of Kent State University after the May uh, fiasco in Ohio. In fact, he was a, a UN ambassador at that particular time, and the President of the United States called him and said, hey, we have a problem in Ohio, they just shot four kids. Yeah, it's So awful. you need to go there and, and uh, put a little oil on the water. Mm -hmm. and that's exactly mm -hmm. what he did, so mm -hmm. that was Glenn. So. And they've written introductions to pieces that you've selected Absolutely from his writings. Absolutely wonderful yeah. pieces. And, and How did uh, you select which ones? You took a little piece from each of the writings? Uh, that's huh? right. And, and uh -huh. so Bucky was always kind of saying that, you know, I don't mind if you don't understand me, right. but it really would bother me if you misquoted me. Uh -huh. So okay. rather than do that, I yeah. took actually a, a piece of every book, and so it's Bucky's own writings, uh -huh. you know, uh -huh. and going to the uh, the 20 chapters, and I said, and then somebody from all around the world uh, writing introductory uh, chapter to it, so that's how it happened, including a very well-known New Yorker who's a wonderful actress, Marion Seldes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. Marion mm -hmm. uh, knew Bucky when she was a child, yeah. just like uh, Susan's known Yeah, that's the thing we were talking about, remembering when he was yeah. a yeah, when when child. Yeah, when they 108th Street in the yeah, East or and something. He was yeah. one of the best, she was one of the best friends of Bucky's uh, daughter, Allegra, yes. and just like Susan's known me for a very long time, so it's wonderful to have a personal assistant that uh, kind of knows you. I would have said Bucky Fuller might be the greatest mind in a comprehensive sense and seeing the full force of his philosophy and perception of things um, uh, that, that we have. He was also very poetic. I thought his language was oh, absolutely was, in fact. beautiful. And if I'm not mistaken, maybe you can set me straight. When they finally grew up, got around to giving him the Norton Chair yes. at Harvard, an honorary degree from which 
He had been ousted from the university as a young man <laughs> for hijinks, say, I He liked understand. to say he was fired twice. Yes, fired, <laughs> yeah, because he had these hijinks. But they, I think they finally ended up giving it to him in poetics. I think I he, think he, of him as a poet. Is he Elliot, Elliot uh, yeah. a chair of poetry? Yeah. Absolutely, you're absolutely right. Yeah. And uh, uh, Bucky really enjoyed it because he was the fifth generation. Yes. Uh, he was a legacy uh, student mm -hmm. at Harvard, and uh, he really enjoyed it. But in those particular days, um, his father had regretfully uh, passed away when he was very young, mm -hmm. and so that uh, family had, uh, the money was tight yeah. in Harvard, and I don't know about now, although I occasionally go to Harvard and give talks. Mm -hmm. uh, in those days, it was really quite uh, uh, important to be in the right so-called eating clubs. And right. because, of, uh, because of the financial situation, and he was bright, I mean, he was brilliant. Uh, got good grades. Yeah. But the question really is, is that this was a social status, so he didn't get in the right eating clubs, if you want to call it that way. Mm -hmm. And so he got up a little bit, and uh, he was, he's quite a quite a Don Juan in his days. Yeah. And so he decided that one day that he was going to take his allowance, and he and there was a group which was kind of similar to the Ziegfeld Follies, yes. and that was George White Scandals. Uh -huh. And there was this gorgeous blonde there, <laughs> and the name was Marilyn Miller. Uh, yeah, of and course. So he got to know yeah. her and, and, and met her, and so he one day, he was just joie de vie, so he just yeah. took out the whole chorus and to, to a high class uh, to, to Churchill's for dinner <laughs> and blew his whole oh, wow, tuition. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it came time for tuition, he uh, didn't have it, uh -huh. so he was excused uh -huh. from school. Uh -huh. And at Bucket delightfully says, I was fired. Uh, that's right. <laughs> Twice, he said. Yeah. The but they time. ended up in the end giving him many honorary degrees. Many, it might be many. worth just a, a mention of what a giant he was well, for he some of the people who may not realize. And the young people, particularly, it seems to me at this time, would do really very well to pick up on the legacy of Buckminster Fuller in a, in a new and kind of way, it seems Carol, to me. Absolutely. And that's, yeah. why that's why we call so we might, this, or I call it, the the, the, the uh, anthology for new millennium absolutely. because the the absolutely phenomenal things that he did absolutely has, has a real impact on what's going to happen on our environment right. on energy and, and how we have the social structure so I think they were very apropos when they said that he was a Leonardo da Vinci because yeah. Leonardo not only was a great painter but he had all these inventions and things like that I'm going to give you one example okay. which is probably the best one not the best one, it's, it, it's, it's one of the examples in that Leonardo da Vinci, 500 years ago, yeah. was sketching a man uh, on a bicycle I'm going an through the air in an airplane. Did you right? see anything on public television and, recently? And yes. Yeah, wasn't that and great? That's delightful. Could I give you another one? Go ahead. Uh, another thing? Well, they had a, oh, example, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. If, 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 yeah, excuse sure. me for interrupting. No, no, no. Said, they, that, at that time, though, uh, the only thing that Leonardo da Vinci had was, was silk. Yeah. Silk has a PSI of about 80. Uh -huh. And so what happened is 500 years later, mm -hmm. okay, they were able to do through yeah. technology, yeah. through technology, uh -huh. they were able to invent a new material. It's called mylar. Yeah. And it has a PSI of, of a pound per square inch material of 300 PSI. Uh -huh. That's phenomenal. Yeah. So they stretched yeah. that over uh -huh. the wings of an airplane that they call the Gossamer Albatross. That's right. Lucky got it. to know him, Paul yeah. Macaretti. Yeah. And so the, yeah. the young man across, the, across the English, the English Channel. Channel. Yeah. Well, how was really? he able to do it? Uh, because of a new material called exactly. technology. Absolutely. So that's what Bucky's saying. That's through technology, right. wow. man can do more. Uh, we with can less. do more with less yep. through technology. And that's why it is so important what the impact of what he's talking about. Absolutely. Huge concept. Huge, Huge and I think concept. Some people are going to say, well, what in the world is a geodesic dome? So yeah. if I Okay, may, if you want. Okay, I'm going to yeah. show you. This is Here, let me hold dome. it up and you right. can talk to it. It's and, a, and this is what is geodesic, geodesic, geodesic first of all? Maybe you could say that for the Geodesic audience. is the shortest distance between two points on a point of a map mm -hmm. of Earth. Geo mm -hmm. meaning Earth. Yeah. But if you're going to do that, it's not going up and then across because the Earth is curved. Mm -hmm. So it is two points on the surface of the Earth following a curve, and that's geo uh -huh. so it's two points. Instead uh -huh. of coming up, around, down, it's following the curvature of the Earth. So that's number one. Number two, Fuller said, you know, I'm going to try to uh, 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 find out the different operating principles of the universe. And once I have that, I'm just going to give it to people. I'm going to share it with people and not try to, to put a meter on it and see how much money I could make. Uh, so he's really closer. going to do yeah. that kind of an idea. And he said, you know, one of the first things that I'm going to think about is tension and compression. Right, yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Now, tension is light. Mm -hmm. 
Light is hitting us at the speed of 186,000 miles per second. We mm -hmm. all know that mm -hmm. through Einstein. And mm -hmm. so that's, that's tension. Mm -hmm. Compression is a stick. So when we mm -hmm. think about the pyramids, that's all compression, just things on top of each other. Mm -hmm. But Bucky's saying, but Mother Nature doesn't do that. Yeah. Mother Nature is tension and compression. Could so I? that's what this particular yeah. model is. And because it is, these are the compression, as we can know, they're sticks. Mm -hmm. And these are the tension. You have to hold it up a little. These bit, are the okay. tension uh -huh. wires. So I'm going to release it. You can see this is quite stable. Very you know, stable. Can, you can you can bounce it off the table if you want mm -hmm. to bounce on these. Mm -hmm. But once I release mm -hmm. the tension, hold it up. Uh, okay. Put it on his camera, man. Is, right. is, is this is this all right? Yeah, yeah. So you can see once yeah. I've started to release it, uh -huh. look what happens. I have released. It collapses, in on it collapses because yeah. the tension and compression is no longer. Yeah you know, in, in, in syncopation. There is no more equilibrium. Right. And you can see now, all of a sudden, we've collapsed it. So there, <laughs> there is no tensegrity, yeah. tensional integrity. Right. Right. The tension is gone, right. the integrity is gone, uh -huh. so it collapses. Uh -huh. So Bucky is basically saying that we must have tension and compression. Yeah. What is another good example of that is obviously a bridge. Uh -huh. The wonderful Brooklyn Bridge that we have right, right here crossing that Roebling did. Right. We have the compression, we have the tension rods mm -hmm. going across the mm -hmm. cables, mm -hmm. and that if you cut the cables, it collapses. So that is the unison mm -hmm. of tension compression. He said, we need to do this in buildings. Mm -hmm. And most buildings are not done that way. Most buildings are just rectangular one brick on top, of, on top of well, another. Well, it's not so much rectangular, oh. although you have a point there. Yeah. It's just compression on top of each other. I see, okay? right. I see so structurally. That, that yeah. makes a very big difference mm -hmm. as opposed to compression and tension. Mm -hmm. And that's what the geodesic dome does. It acts in compression and tension, which I just showed you yeah. in this particular case. And thing. it mimics, if I may, it mimics uh, a naturally occurring pattern. Absolutely. And if I could just add on that, and it's also, if I'm not mistaken, I'm not an architect, but it, 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 it is the most efficient way to enclose space. It is, absolutely. It has tremendous uh, ability to resist uh, snow co cover and so forth. It has great practical application in practical terms application of... practical uh, application because if you think of, of, of it in, in terms of, of the formula, which is pi r square. Mm -hmm. If you double the diameter, uh -huh. you four times the surface area, mm -hmm. but you eight times the volume. Mm -hmm. Imagine, yeah. eight times yeah, the volume, yeah. and you have yeah. tremendous, that's why people have sailboats, uh -huh. and they call two foot titus, uh -huh. you know, and they think about larger and larger. Uh -huh. But you go into that, and you've eight times the volume of the, of the yeah. ship. Yeah. This is tremendous. Absolutely. So you do this yeah. enough times uh -huh. that, that the molecules have, have taken up this, this dome and it's uh -huh. so light and, and, uh -huh. and, uh, and just absolutely buoys itself. Yeah. And Bucky even at one time, just as a, as, a, uh, uh, as a notion, as a visionary, he actually had a dome over Manhattan from the east side. Yeah, it is a design from, concept. From, yeah. He went from the Hudson River yeah. to the East River. It was uh, 3.2 kilometers, which is about a mile and a half, and that's what it is from the Would East Would it cover where we are now? It, it covered everything it we It would did. have, yeah. It, it was just a, a, a visionary project. Yeah, he was a visionary. He but he was mimicking, or he was modeling after nature. Yeah, and he wasn't this, mimicking. And he was I, just taking the yeah, principles okay. of nature. Right. And, and applying and using them, applying oh. them, and that's what your dome does. You know, if you think about some of the domes that he's done, just a pure dome weighs 2.2 pounds per square foot. Mm -hmm. You take wood and, and the other things, that's about 10 times. Concrete is, is 20 to 30 times that. So for pound per erg, uh -huh. you've done more with less. Right. And because you've done more with less, there's enough for everybody. Right. So that, unlike the Malthus theory uh -huh. that, you know, you can't have enough, through technology uh -huh. and using the principles of nature, mm -hmm. Bucky says you can do more with less. That's right. In fact, his one of his dictums very much was that you know, that that we can do so much for humanity, that we have enough to do for humanity without ecological harm, and and and. Uh, 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 hurting the nature, which is what we are doing now, uh -huh. which is really kind of sad, and it's, that has led to, unfortunately, the situation that we've, we've been in a, a, a great deal. A great many huge concepts there. I think he used it, you set me straight because you're more familiar with him. He had the term ephemeralization mm -hmm. of doing yeah. more with less. with less. And one extension of the geodesic, as we were just speaking of, was small ages past, but they come up with carbon-60, right. and carbon-60 is termed Buckminster Fullerene, yes. and it is going to be the backbone or the basis of computing 
when we get past the silicon chip and so forth, and it's the basis of nanotechnology and molecular computing, which is the future of an overabundant, it's overwhelmingly efficient in terms of transmission capability, and it was named after Buckminster Fuller, yeah. and it's going to have tremendous application, but probably even more than that is just doing more with less with good design and lay the basis for a design science revolution that mm -hmm. we can make the environment in a way that allows the good to come out and also, in a way, if I'm not mistaken, where he said that the haves and have-nots that we were gaining through the technological efficiency and the, uh, the, the, uh, the design capability being applied, we were gaining in the percentage of the world population that could be seen to be have coming out of haves, coming out of history, exactly. and that he counted 1970 as a major mm -hmm. year mm -hmm. when that, pr that process reached, as his accounting, out of world game, where we crossed the 50% mark in 1970 in terms of our abstract technologically augmented capability of providing life support. Am I more or less correct? Absolutely. Am I all based on all no, of no, that? No, Those correct. are all huge, huge concepts that should be much better understood than they seem to me by our political leadership and so forth or by our general intellectual community, even the youth, than they ought to be. What do you think? Well, there's, there's several factors that come into it, and you're absolutely right, and, and Bucky hit it right there, because when he was first uh, uh, born in 1895, mm -hmm. uh, the way that we communicated was basically the telegraph. If the that, radio, you, just the, that, the, yeah. The radio, yeah. the telephone mm -hmm. uh, was there, but basically it was all in infancy. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until he was eight and a half, almost nine years old, mm -hmm. that mankind all of a sudden mm -hmm. had gone from, from, from just, you know, walking to leaping forward because the Wright brothers had invented the airplane. That's right. In fact, because they, that happened, the map, which we know as the Mercator map, mm -hmm. which is an east-west world, yeah. because we were going and shipping the lines, right. were no longer valid. And that's what another geodesic, so he invented what called the Dimaxia map. Yeah. That was a folded icosahedron, which is a, which is a polyhedron, which is in 20-sided. In, in, in mm -hmm. And what basically, that, again, was doing more with less, but just thinking in the, in the ethemeralization mm -hmm. concept. And so he just said, no. He says, we need to follow the, the nature way and huh? the natural way, right. and that's how it came up. Follow yeah. the geodesic. So yeah. when you leap, you yeah. leap yeah. there from, uh, from the east-west. You know, yeah. Rudyard Kipling, maybe <laughs> at that time, was saying east is west and west is west. Yeah. Well, never twain, but, but once you had the airplane, you uh, did the shortest distance, uh, you had right. the geodesic, and you went, it no longer was an east-west world. It was uh, a north-south world. Right. Wow. Uh -huh. Now, my yeah. goodness, that, that really changed yeah. things. Yes, you know? uh-huh. And, um, and, and had uh, had anybody really thought in those terms that yeah. we'd be thinking in terms of the chip, exactly what you're saying, and that was that was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. I'm going to come back again to something that when Bucky invented the the notion of geodesic dome, yeah. the largest dome that mankind had ever had was 150 feet. Where and would that, that, that have a, been? That was the Pantheon, okay. back in the second time. And then the next one was. Uh, Michelangelo having the gall uh -huh. to say to Bramante, uh -huh. say, yes, but the St. Peter's Dome was, was starting to crack. He uh -huh. said, well, what do we need to do? We need to have compression and tension. Well, this is all yeah, compression. Yeah, yeah, it was thrusting yeah, out. Yeah, right, Michelangelo right. says, we well, better put a chain around that uh -huh. and put that tension around that, uh -huh. and all of a sudden it worked. Uh -huh. And so that was 150 feet. Uh -huh. And then lo and behold, uh -huh. Bucky back in the 50s goes and does one 384 feet in mm -hmm. diameter, which is the, the, the dome in, in Baton Rouge. And of course, the granddaddy of them all was the Expo 67. Wasn't that gorgeous? Wonderful, gorgeous. Wonderful piece. It was, it was we, we, we in the office call it the, the Buckminster Cathedral, yes. which is what Peter Ustinov used to call it. Did he? And, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, it was 250 yeah. feet in this equatorial diameter, five yeah. eighths of a sphere. Uh -huh. And it was just a wonderful piece, and of course, it got the acclaim uh, of, the the whole world. of the whole world. Absolutely. Now every fair has a, has a dome, because people know the Epcot Center and a lot of other things, but the, it was just the idea of doing more with less with this with this with this dome. That's a huge concept in and of itself. It and and the first one that he did when he was at Black Mountain, you're gonna be talking That's to your group about Black Mountain. About it was Black kind Mountain of funny. College, but didn't first one didn't work and, and some of there some of them were saying, Well disappointing. He said, Well I'm gonna learn from my mistakes until you succeed. Which fact, is a great sort of mindset. Dome, he was very optimistic, right? That particular dome uh -huh. was was uh, was a dome done in Black Mountain College, which I and why I'm in the city, uh, on the symposium. And uh, because it didn't go up, uh, Elaine de Kooning, yeah. 
uh, call it the supine dome. Yes. But everybody was <laughs> depressed about it because they'd been working all summer. Uh -huh. But Bucky was all excited. Yeah. He said, yeah. no, no, no. It, he says, we learn by yeah. trial and error. Yeah, and, and he, he said, we, it's from our fairs that we learn. And, and he was just interested. And he had a huge conceived concept of let's help everybody and let's think of things comprehensively. And, and the other hero that he had was Thomas Edison. I uh -huh. remember the story that, that uh, Bucky used to tell us. He said when, when Edison was told, he said, well, Dr. Edison, uh, here you've been working for years for the tungsten and, and you've done a hundred experiments mm. and none of it work. Aren't you depressed? Mm. He says, no, good heavens, I've learned a lot. I now know 99 ways of why it doesn't work. That was Mr. Edison? That was Thomas See, Edison. he was also and positive. So it was one of these things that's that Bucky a, that's a, was not was not depressed at all, and so the next year it went up, and everybody was just was just absolutely just just it was just the whole process of thinking. Uh, I, I kind of dislike the idea of saying it's out of the box. It's just thinking omnidirectionally. Yes, uh, right. Science. That would have been, he would have approved of and that. The design term, science huh? certainly continues, yeah. and I'm going to go back to what you just said about the three Nobel laureates: uh -huh. was Dr. Curl, Robert uh -huh. Curl. Rick Smalley, who regretfully just died. He just died last ago. week, yeah, a couple of weeks. And yeah. the third one is uh, Harry Croto. Uh -huh. And they, indeed, when they discovered the molecule, carbon sixty. Carbon, carbon sixty. People are going to be a hearing. Natural material, right? And uh, Harry Croto had 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 known Bucky, and as the other two had too, and they said, "Hey, let's call it after Bucky Fuller." And it remember, looked geodesic. Bucky died in 1983. Yes. But his legacy and his thought and his influence, you know. Lives on. You know, lives on, and that's oh. why it's so important. It's going to live on in higher and more important dimensions than Carbon it even has. Carbon-60 yeah. will be the next major issue. Absolutely. And in fact, before uh -huh. uh, Rick Smalley uh, uh -huh. passed away, he and I talked, and, and he had and he quoted, he said, he was working on nanotechnology. Yes, that's the basis material of material that's yeah. uh, 10 times to 100 times stronger than steel. Yeah. 100 times stronger yeah. than steel. Right lighter, uh -huh. continuous filament, yeah. nanotechnology, very light in fabric, and he was working on that. Um, Dr. Uh, 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 Smalley, mm -hmm. uh, uh, regretfully, Texas, will right? not, he was, he's yeah. from Rice University. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, Bob Curl and I still talk a great deal. In Good. fact, he, he was very instrumental in uh, getting the Bucky stamp uh, I love this last year. I Thank like you very stand. much. Yeah. And, and we, we are very proud of having uh -huh. uh, been a part of that. Uh -huh. And the other one is uh, Harry Croto, who just spent a year in Florida. And uh, Harry has always been a tremendous support. And some of the things that he's doing uh -huh. with the molecule is just absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. In fact, um, tomorrow we're going to be talking with uh, uh, Dr. Don Inberg, uh -huh. uh, who's talking about the C60 in medicine. Good. And the Cisco yeah. skeleton. So it's continuing on in vast. So this book is <coughs> very important for young people. And it is, uh, uh, I like to say that I dedicated that book to the young, regardless of age. Good for you. And I think we ought to say here, we ought to say it a couple times, let people know there is a very, <coughs> excuse me, I got a little bit of cold, mm -hmm. folks. But uh, we, there's a very rich site that you have in the organization, the Buckminster Fuller Institute. Yes, the site is morning. very rich. His writings Thank are you. there. It's mm -hmm. getting richer all the yeah. time. It's something that should be paid to great attention by our people. It's one of the major sites that there is in cyberspace. I congratulate you on that. Well, and thank, the URL is bfi.org. BFI, which is Buckminster B Fuller Institute. Right. So it's bfi.org. When did that get started? And was uh, that out we, in Stanford? We, it, is there a connection right with Stanford? Oh, very much indeed. Yeah. It's, uh -huh. uh, Stanford University um, acquired the Buckminster Fuller Archive. Mm -hmm. This was what Bucky called a chronophile. Chronophile. And yeah. the chronophile was, was uh, operated uh, mm -hmm. by the uh, Institute and by Bucky himself, yeah. by the uh, office in Philadelphia where Bucky was for 11 years under the uh, Design Science uh, Institute. Uh, science uh, mm -hmm. was a wonderful uh, area that mm -hmm. he did a great deal with. Mm -hmm. And so they acquired the archives and they've digitized it. It's out in the public for people to look at. Uh, uh, Bucky's uh, other partner, which you showed you, Sadale, uh, just came back from there yesterday. Uh -huh. And he's working on a, a show uh -huh. between Noguchi and uh, uh, Bucky Fuller, their influence. Uh -huh. uh, last week, I just came back from St. Louis, yes. East St. Louis. I we got to make sure we East talk St. Louis, yeah. um, Bucky came up with this idea with this wonderful dancer back in 1970 by the name of uh, Catherine uh, Dunham. Mm -hmm. Catherine uh -huh. Dunham might be, and I hope I'm not offending anybody by saying, she's the Afro-American uh, Martha Graham of wow. dance. I mean, really? she's just absolutely okay. phenomenal. Where is she hanging and, her uh, hat? She hangs her hat in East St. Louis. Okay, uh, great. She's in New York right uh -huh, now. She, uh -huh. 
I was there to, to wish her a happy birthday just right. three weeks ago yeah. in East St. Louis. She, I, I'm not exactly sure, but I think she's 94, but I'm, I could oh. be off. Wow. Uh, so she was a, a friend of Bucky. And so he came up with this wonderful concept. Uh -huh. And the concept was a one mile dome. One mile. Which, which is 500, 280 feet, as we know. Uh -huh. It was over part of the city of East St. Louis. So it was an idea. And it's been carried on by state representative Wyvetta Young. Uh -huh. And it was a concept. A yeah. concept to make people proud, like that thing but from also Manhattan, doing, yeah. doing more with less. Yes, to the energy uh -huh. and also the different things to go with it to make people say, hey, here's a way to, 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 to put, coalesce all the citizens, right. have a vision, and to do something ec ecologically important for it. So uh, we've been talking to them, and because of Katrina, uh -huh. it's very easy for me to say, but you know, uh, East St. Louis is right next to the Mississippi River, yeah. and because it is near the Re mm -hmm. Mississippi River, instead of you know putting dikes and dams there, let's have a Venice. Yeah. Uh, East St. Louis could be the Venice of the Mississippi. It was one of the poorest cities in the it country. Is. I used to it, teach at Edwards, just right. on the street it, from it there. 70,000 oh. citizens at the time that Bucky was working on uh -huh. it. I was just there three weeks ago, yeah. and I know that the population down to 34, 35,000, uh -huh. and it's still the poorest uh, city in, in America. Regret the poorest city in America? City. That's some sort Poverty of an accolade so, or some sort of a, that is not, a record. That is not anything yeah. to be proud of. So yeah. it was yeah. actually to get them out. So the right. dome is a symbol. Uh -huh. It's a symbol to do something. So we've talked about things like having a Catherine Dunham uh, International School of Dance and Music. Uh -huh. Invite all the African nations to, to, to have a school, kind of like Juilliard or kind of like the uh, Curtis Institute of Music, you know, where you would be, and, and you had just mentioned uh, uh, Arnett Coleman, you know, to have these wonderful musicians come and teach and learn from there, but not just America, or all around the world. That's really yeah, a good idea. Really, all around That's the really world. That's really a good idea. And then uh, yeah. the, the also, the, the idea of also theater, mm -hmm. and so we're hoping to enlist the aids of the Harry Belafontes and the, and the uh, Stevie Wonders, That's great. Are you, yeah. and, and oh, people like yeah. that. Richie uh, Havens, maybe? Havens, yeah. uh, and, and, and are hopefully... You, uh, 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 start that kind of movement because uh -huh. I was privileged to work for eight years with Edward Durrell Stone, okay. who uh, did the uh, uh, at that time uh -huh. uh, we call it the, the uh, National Cultural Center. Okay. It was after regretfully the the, uh, the death of the president that they changed the name to the John F. Kennedy for Performing Arts. Mm -hmm. So I worked on that for for many many years. In fact, I was with him for eight years. Mm -hmm. um, that was a real learning experience and gave me the basis to be able to really. Um, help Bucky and, 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 and to, to, to aid in the office. I mean, Bucky didn't need any help, but you know what I mean, it just, just it was, uh, it was uh, be able to, to, to contribute. Yes, to I office. see. It must have been a very pretty, you're an architectural background. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm the, I'm the uh, uh, Shoji and I are the architectural arm of the Bucky Fuller uh, uh -huh. uh, legacy. Yeah. Uh, he also had an office in St. Louis, in, uh, uh, as you know, in uh, Pennsylvania, uh, in Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, and Shirley Sharkey was in charge of that. And then, of course, he did a lot of writings, as you said, at yeah. SIU, uh -huh. uh, Southern Illinois University. Yeah, at Carbondale. Professor Carbondale, yeah. uh -huh. where he wrote the Operating Manual for Spaceship Earth. Isn't that a great term? Yeah, yeah. He, he coined yeah. the term Spaceship, spaceship Earth, Earth, if I'm not mistaken. that's who we are. A giant, a giant of a person whose legacy is only just now on the verge of mm -hmm. really being fully realized. It seems to me he was way ahead of his time. Absolutely. And this idea yeah. of ephemeralization is huge yeah. with the elegance of design. Mm -hmm. You can do more with less and so forth. Mm -hmm. and, and it comes around then to finally. And that thing, I think something that's overlooked is he had that from World Game. Were you involved with the World yes, well, Game the was, and was the design science mm -hmm. a decade, 65, and, and 75? What, that's what's so good about World Game. We have a couple of people out there that are really fostering it. And one is Norman Foster. Yeah. Norman Foster was a student and, 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 a, and a colleague of Bucky. And of course, he did the Reichstadt building. Uh -huh. He did the, uh, in fact, he's doing a building in Manhattan, the Hertz building. Okay. Uh, he was also the, Pris he was a Prisca Prize winner, but it just, wonderful thing he's doing. The other one is Bill Madonna, uh -huh. and he's the green architect. He's the one that's doing uh, work with the uh, Ford uh, uh, River Rouge project. He's doing some projects What's in China. happening there? His name is... Uh, no, at River Madonna. Rouge in Detroit. River Rouge in Detroit. What, what he's doing is he's, he's looking at the ecology and saving money mm -hmm. at River Rouge. And the first year that he's been planning with mm -hmm. the Ford uh, Motor Company, mm -hmm. he saved them something like $13 million by getting rid of all the uh, sewers 
stormwater sewers and recycling it and putting uh, grass and, and uh, green on the roof. And so instead of the water going into the sewer and then being, you know, recycled and going out to the lake, right. he takes that water and he just puts it into the... Marvelous. And, and he lowers the temperature yeah. in the buildings like about something like 7 to 10 degrees. Right. He doesn't do waste it. And that's what Bucky always said. Hey, you need yeah. to think yeah. about how to yeah. work with ephemerization. Yeah, I, ephemerization and yeah. good design. Absolutely. You need to design science. Design science. And you, new materials take advantage of things and that's that are what the, coming. These two are doing. He had a thing about coal is more efficient as it goes through time. The use of it, it was very more yeah. efficient. James Joyce had that, let's say, history is a nightmare Absolutely. from which we're attempting to yeah. awaken. But one thing, a summation thing, it seems that this thing about coming out of World Game, and mm -hmm. they were doing the projecting, and it was non-ideologically laden in any mm -hmm. kind of way, like political. He wasn't political. No. He was designing He's very science. apolitical. Yeah, he was apolitical, apolitical. and he said, uh, design the environment so the good can come out, mm -hmm. rather than trying to change people's mind he in a political way. He used to or, say that all the time. Yeah. He says, he says, he says, I, says, I don't want to change. I have no right. He said, to change your mind, but I can change technology. Yeah, and you can change the environmental context in which exactly. we interrelate and, and understand you will it do and communicate it. about it. One thing that That's he used a to huge use an example, good idea. which was a very good example, mm -hmm. is that when he was young, and, mm -hmm. and, and myself too, mm -hmm. uh, we didn't own telephones, remember? We used to rent them. We didn't have to own it. Uh -huh. For 10 cents or a nickel or whatever, you rented the telephone. You didn't have to really own it. Uh -huh. This whole notion of that everybody has to own something didn't make an awful lot of sense. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. He said, hey, you just need to use it. Uh -huh. And so that was something that, that people have gotten away from, uh -huh. saying, I've got to own this, I've got to own that. No. And so this is what one of the things that Bill Madonna is doing is he said, the cars every three or five years, you should really turn it in and we can recycle it. So he's talking recycling about, he's talking great, about yeah. recycling in abundance. He's working with Nike. He said we practically have all the copper we need if we recycle, it's already say, been mined. He said we yeah. just recycle. Why do we right. want to keep, you know, digging right. into digging the earth? Digging more when we've got enough. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So uh -huh. Norman Foster, so we are going in a three-pronged approach. Mm -hmm. One is design science, which is very much with Norman Foster. He's now Lord, Lord Norman Foster, which I think is terrific. Lord, good. And the yeah. other one is Bill Madonna with abundance. And third one is C60, as you mentioned, yeah. with, with the nanotechnology. Yeah. My own personal thought is those three things are really going to go ahead, yeah. and it's really going to be Bucky and the Buckminster to Fullerene 100 years from now that people really remember and well, recall it's be the, yeah. Bucky for that. You knew him well. I did not. I, I pre that Yeah, you knew that. that. that I, I venture to say that he would be absolutely delighted with the Internet. He would absolutely, absolutely be he, overwhelmingly he, he, he predicted pleased. It, he predicted what, it way ahead of anybody. That's what Steve he did. Wrote about, yeah, I know. I was really. Uh, I, I think about it often. I said, "How Bucky Fuller oh, yeah. would love the internet." Absolutely. Yeah, and pressing a button. Yeah, knowing exactly yeah. Where, where things are going to be uh, at. And, and he uh, presaged it. Oh, absolutely. He saw it coming yeah, in something. his automated in, uh, education, automation, education, all these things. automation, which uh -huh. is another, uh -huh. in fact, another writer of the book was uh, another the person that's uh, absolutely fantastic, and that's Calvin Tomkin, uh -huh, yeah. a New Yorker. Uh -huh. And uh, he writes a piece about Bucky and, and education automation, so I'm glad you, you mentioned that. And uh, Bucky was so apolitical that, uh, <laughs> uh, that, that, but he did get annoyed once, and that was that he was so incensed that this country would not pass ERA. Yeah. Uh -huh. He was so incensed that he got a Barbara Marx Hubble. I don't know if you know Ma who Mark she Hubble? Sure, I've yeah. done programs so he with said, Barbara Marx Hubble. Barbara, I want yeah. you to run against Nixon yeah. as President of the United States. <laughs> and she yeah. did. Of course, she yeah. lost. Yeah, right, right. But that was one yeah. of the few times he stepped in. I love and Barbara. There was, there was another young man in, in, uh, in Cleveland that he was all for, and that was uh, by name Tim Hagen. And uh, Tim is, is, it just so happens he's married to uh, the, the commander of the, of the Starship Enterprise. That's, <laughs> that's Kate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's funny. But well, he, he, was our, he was our first maybe real futurist who came. And Barbara Marx yeah. Huggers with the Future Society. Yeah, so that in a so sense is... So she contributed to, to the book also. Oh, good. So very good. Yeah, very so good. yeah she have, was grand. We have uh, uh, three women. Uh -huh. uh, she's one. Uh -huh. uh, Mary Sell the second. And then uh, Valerie Harper. And but, I'm sorry. And then Bucky's daughter. I don't think of her... And the, male or female. She I just, heard. I, you know, she's just a wonderful person. Right. I heard what you said. Three. One. Did one of those carry on the uh, continuation of the implications of the world game idea? World game. Because, was, if I may. World that, game. That was still a still going on. Okay. Still good. On. No. What I'm trying to say, if I may, in a certain sense, we're just going into a thing where we've had all this thing about our intelligence agencies mm -hmm. that exist in a world scale. 
defense intelligence, CIA, all the intelligence agencies are, are politically, but the world, design, the world game, if I'm not mistaken, and set me right, was one where it took trends, it took ideas, it took the, the, the trans population trends, technology trends, mm -hmm. new resources and so forth, and got a real reading of what's actually going on in terms of the capability of the human society mm -hmm. without a lot of edge, uh, I, uh, ideological late, larder thinking. Mm -hmm. And it's probably and perhaps the single most important source and the idea of uh, our gaining an idea where we can know what it is we're capable of in, in, in clear terms and have the participation. In it's a huge idea, it seems to me, in terms of a way for people to participate in understanding the world in which we live and are operating. It's still functioning? It's still functioning, world, world game. Uh, uh, you can still go on their website and have it and have them come in. And the thing that was so good about World yeah. Game is that uh, it held these uh, classes in World Game with children. Yeah. Because once you get them you know, involved and they really understand, uh, Bucky in, in some of his writings would talk about the cost of oil. Yeah. The cost of oil is not what you think it is, uh -huh. as one thinks it is in public, $3 a gallon or $5 a gallon in, in Europe or $6, whatever it is. The real cost of it is what it's doing to environment, Absolutely. what it's doing with the shipping, uh, sure. the, the artificial uh, things going in, so that these are the things that World Game really talks about, the food waste, uh -huh. you know, how we, as you know, in our particular country, we have all these subsidies for eggs and butter and corn. Most and of it like goes that. to the agribusiness. And, and gets wasted. Yes, and absolutely. And meanwhile, people are starving. Yeah. So World Game translates all of this by numbers and population and where it goes. So it's a real eye-opener for young people who have not been. And for the world. And for the world. But our if you start, CIA with, the, but if you start with the young yeah, people, yeah. they really say, Mom, Dad, you know, what you've been telling me, why are we in the paper? Yeah. I don't, I'm not sure it's true because I went through this program and this, it, this, is, this is how I see it. Right, so, right. And mommy and daddy say, no, 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 it, read the papers. Well, we know that papers are, are sometimes well, for, shaded. For one thing, mm -hmm. if I may, I saw a program the other day about design, mm -hmm. right? And they had, I'm going to do it quick. It's a channel on television called Odyssey or uh, Omn uh, Ovation. It's about the arts. And they had a thing about the piano. Mm -hmm. It's 300 years old, and most of our Western music has been composed on the piano. Mm -hmm. And they said that they were get, it was evolving, and then it said Beethoven. And they said you can only do so much with the. Beethoven gave it a real test run, and they really played mm -hmm. forte and everything. And they had an image of a Ferrari going. It was really well done. And the thing is that he had in the music, the guy was really good. Had in the music a design you want to call it, nuance, that the technologies and you that thing about Mylar was really interesting. Mm -hmm that he had it, and then 60 years after he had done the composition, and they had the pianos that could realize it, they could hear, hear the full force <laughs> of what it is that was being said. Bucky used to say he was 50 years ahead of his time oh, or something. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, and th th that's the point is that he you're ahead call, of time. That's an important just, concept. He used to call it a gestation period. Okay. He uh -huh. said the gestation period for building materials is right. about 50 years. The uh -huh. gestation period for automobile, he said it was about 10 years. Yeah. The gestation period for airplane is about 25. So he had yeah. these different gestation periods. And of course, we know human beings is about nine months. And mm -hmm. we know the elephant yeah. is 20 22 months or whatever it is. Yeah. And so all these different gestation periods do come about. So some of it just kind of goes in your mind and go through. So he really felt that there was a gestation period even for ideas. Mm -hmm. And I really do believe that. Mm -hmm. And that's why I, and this is coming from me, not yes, coming please. from Bucky, is that, that, yeah. that, that Bucky's contribution mm -hmm. and his memories and what people think about him 100 years from now will be the Bucky, will Bucky ball, the, the, the carbon 60 atom, uh, not atom, a uh, 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 molecule, and the things that he thought about in, in uh, what we call synergetics. The synergetics behavior is, uh, is, 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 the, is the geometry of thinking. Yeah. And this is where he That's really it. comes in. Yeah. The artifact of the geodesic dome is wonderful, uh -huh. and, and he'll be remembered for that just like Michelangelo. He was a great philosopher. He's a philosopher. Absolutely, and, and the philosopher thinking, of the ages. Thinking, yes. really uh -huh. thinking. Right. And I think that's where it's going to come out. Uh -huh. And it's wonderful to be noted for, as I said, for, for one painting like mm. Leonardo yeah. was, you know, right. the Mona Lisa. But uh -huh. he was more than that. Oh, yeah. And Bucky was much more. Polymath. Yeah. Poly, he's much yeah. more than just 
and I, I don't mean that way, Jeff, I, but he's more than a geodesic dome. Oh, absolutely. He's, he's absolutely, a, com but a comprehensive. It's, it's an easy thing to talk about. Yeah. It's also derived a lot, comprehensive, because they'll say, how can you be a comprehensivist when there's so much to know? And academia has all gone specialist. Mm -hmm. It's all gone quantitative, and everything is so specialized. You can't be a comprehensive because it's so complex. And yet the... Uh, you know, Norbert Wiener says information overload yep. within a system permits pattern recognition at another level. And we may be getting to the point where in the evolution of events with the technological extension of our content, we're getting to the point where we can begin to see big patterns mm -hmm. that relate. And one of the big patterns, if I may, I, 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 it seems to me to be overlooked by the intellectual community, out of world game. He took a measurement of haves and have nots in mm -hmm. terms of our capability of applying like Life support, mm -hmm. he would call it, living ring. Living rather ring. Than, He's called living he, ring instead of weapon ring. He said we had 10% and he had a, a scale. So we mm -hmm. went up coming into the modern. 10% right. of the world could be seen to be halves by the First World War, maybe 20% mm -hmm. by the Second World War. And he copyrighted in 1952 a chart. Mm -hmm. And he said, we're here, I don't know what it was, 33. Shot. And he said, we have a 20-year period of imminent crisis out from 1972 to when our collective system, understood wholly, coming out of history, is going to cross the 50% mark, mm -hmm. and that we would, in a certain sense, have more haves in terms of our technological Which capability of providing life support for the first time in human history. Mm -hmm. And that's a concept, in a certain sense, if you get it into another language, you're beginning to get the concept that we have ontologically or some term, mm -hmm. some large term for understanding a qualitatively altered reality, maybe short of religiosity or something or quantum physics or something, but we've crossed a line where there are more, we've, we've crossed the line where we have in a certain sense transcended with our capability the iron log plows, the, uh, 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 the, the, the iron log principle of scarcity itself, which mm -hmm. has been what the nations have been fighting over for so long, and it never seems to be on the lips of our political or economic leaders, much less even our intellectual leaders, to the degree it seems to me it ought to be brought front and center, examined in a world game sense, is that possible? And if it is, it will, it will have an implication for so many other human institutions we've inherited out of history, don't you think, or am I off base? No, no, I think you're right on target. The regretful thing is that political leaders have a very short span, mm -hmm. whether it be two years, four years, or six years. Mm -hmm. It's such a small amount of time. A quarter, it, yeah. It, it, that that yeah. they, can, they, they think measure biopsy, things by a quarter. And yeah. Instead of thinking in terms of the, the what we might call a big picture and omnidirectionally, as Bucky would say, they think in, in such a small focus right. that they only care about getting reelected and care in, 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 in very small ways, and, and it's not only limited to our country, as mm -hmm. we know it, it Absolutely. happens all over yeah. uh, uh, the country. So when we talk about democracy and, and voting, uh, I think there's a, there's a fallaciousness to, to that whole notion of that, because the big picture is very, very clearly not thought of. And so Bucky was always thinking in terms of the whole, and he calls it omnidirectional thinking, uh -huh. rather than specific, and you mentioned about uh, specialization. He used to have a, 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 an amusing story about the goonie bird. Mm -hmm. And the goonie bird was a bird that was in the swamps. Yeah. And he had went down the beak mm -hmm. and, and uh, he used to uh, sip the water and yeah. sick the, the nourishment. Yeah. And then the next generation had a little longer beak. Uh -huh. and then they, so they wouldn't have to bend over so much. And pretty soon, the, 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 uh, by the fifth generation, the, the bird had this awfully long beak so it didn't have to <laughs> lean over and, and you know, do that. Uh -huh. And then one day a forest fire came. Uh -huh. And the forest fire came, uh, the forest, uh, the, the fire came near the forest mm -hmm. and near the swamps. And the bird wanted to take off to escape. Yeah. But it couldn't because uh -huh. the beak was so long. <laughs> and so this is specialization. Uh -huh. He yeah. said that's, he said that's the danger. And now, that's the way that academia was, is gone. Yeah, I've been in academia. This is something that, that has, has disturbed him ter terribly. Uh -huh. And because they've always tried to pigeonhole Bucky, and he can't be pigeonholed. Well, no, they would say you're treading on my territory. I Absolutely. know, and you're a you're a, a master of everything, and, and no, yeah. a, a jack of all trades, a master mm -hmm. of none, and comprehensive. You say to the youth, they are. He said at one point, all the children are geniuses. That's we right. de-genionize them, or something. Well, this is very true. And I think it's true. Yeah. Yeah. And he's saying you could be. They're interested in everything, and that idea of being comprehensive rather than divided mm -hmm. down. The British used to say, divide and conquer. Mm -hmm. You can That's divide right. and conquer the consciousness by getting everybody so specialized out they can't think about mm -hmm. the whole and perhaps become in a life supportive kind of mm -hmm. way 
uh, challenging of the historically inherited institutions over which the, the master political game players are playing out their games that we see practically overwhelmingly as the full content of what I, the news and what we call reality. But something There's a happened. broader reality that we have to become in tune with, that he is a precursor of that among others, but he's the leading one, it seems and, to me. And, and something that you're saying is very accurate now, because you know, when the, the way the British Empire used to say, you know, the sun never set in the British Empire, because yeah. they had a place in London, they had a place in, in India, they yeah. had uh, the Caribbean, they had uh, China and Hong Kong, right. and so they had all these different areas. You could get away with it then because we didn't have the net. Right. We didn't have the communication. Isn't the net great? But now that we have it, <laughs> right. it's very difficult. I mean, right. The one, right. When one tunes in yeah. and saw what's happening in Iraq, uh -huh. the first one and uh -huh. the second one, uh -huh. that was instantaneous. Yeah. We may or may not like it, but it's harder to fool people. Uh -huh. The question now is that that's where technology is. Yeah. I'm not sure that human mind has caught up with that technology. I'm sure of it. That is, well, it was like Beethoven that, playing, and that, it can't that, catch up. But it's cultural lag, yeah, right. communication lag. Don't the institutions I think always is what yeah, is that's what we're living out? Disturbing people right yeah, now. Exactly. Whether it be what just happened in yeah, Paris, yeah. or what's happening in Iraq, right. or what's happening with with even the uh, right now as this program is being er, uh, aired. Thanksgiving Day the, of 2005. They're talking about the avarian uh, uh, bird flu. I think yeah. all of this, you know, I call it the cultural lag. Yeah. It's probably maybe more accurate to say a communication lag, but, yeah. but the news and the, and the human emotion has not caught up. Right. That is the similar to what Bucky was doing with this. Because that chart. When he, was, yeah. when he was born in 1895, yes. there was about a million, a million and a half people. Uh -huh. When he died, there was about almost four million. Since that time, there were about five million, uh, five billion, I'm sorry. Billion, yeah. Five six billion, billion people right now, almost yeah. six billion. Yeah. So you can see the, the numbers have gone up tremendously, yeah. and then the education has done the same thing. Because uh -huh. remember, when he was, a young man, 90% uh, of the world was illiterate. Mm -hmm. okay, by the time he passed away mm -hmm. in 1983, yeah. um, that number had climbed tremendously. Right. Why? Because of communication right. and, and, uh -huh. and education. And, an, yeah. and, and technology. And technology the of comes our... back to technology. Yeah, yeah. He said, through technology, mm -hmm. Bucky would say, and he mankind would, uh, can do what they need to do, right. and that is really the essence of Bucky Fuller, doing more with less, yep. uh -huh. through technology, uh -huh. I have no Good right design. To, and, and that's design science. Uh -huh. I have no right to tell you what to do. Uh -huh. But if I can get you a, a better technology, yeah. you will you will on your own mind uh -huh. go to it. And your own mind might be freed from having to do mundane things. It's like a kind Absolutely. of slave system out of right. history where so many of the people are involved in doing things that serve only a few. Maybe he said in and, one and, some of his writings, most of the people are not very actively engaged. There are things that could be done by machines, an automated mm -hmm. process, and they could be free to be concerned with the matters of the mind and spirit. And so that there's and no we may be at a liberation that he's well, heralding. Liberation and a large scale, you know, large well, a lot, a lot of, of that scale. liberation is now, as you, as you have, have aptly said it, uh, through the net, because there is no more, not no more, it's very difficult to filter. A newspaper could filter. We knew what happened with yellow journalism yeah. and the filters, and people are trying to do that right now, mm -hmm. because there are certain uh, uh, both religious and uh, uh, political action groups that like to own radio stations or newspapers and try to do their own filters. Some people think know. communications uh, are fourth uh, part of government. Absolutely. You know, and, yeah. and so the whole notion is that because we have this freedom mm -hmm. with the net and blogging or whatever other things you want to do, you can kind of be your own filter. Mm -hmm. So that I suspect that maybe not right now because mm -hmm. there's some mega corporations that do own these major stations. Getting and smaller and smaller, it's down to about four exactly, or five now. Exactly. Every, it used to be 55. However, I suspect uh -huh. that because mankind is getting better educated yes. and being more interested, that it's going to be harder to do that. So even now, one may de be depressed and say, oh yes, we're, we're getting biased or prejudiced information. Now, yes, that's the beginning of it. But maybe five, ten years from now, that's going to be much more difficult to and, do. And the youth can't do better than getting educated than get, repairing to Buckminster Fuller. That's right. They pick up World Game and Buckminster Fuller and all of your work. I think that's where you should really be picking up. It's interesting. It's 1970. Mm -hmm. 
There was something blowing in the wind, Bobby Dylan said yeah, at that time. That's right. And it was something major going on. Mm -hmm. And you know, I've talked with people who are very expert on the others, Michio Kaku, the mm -hmm. physicist, mm -hmm. string theory, mm -hmm. also the Joshua Lederberg, yeah. mm -hmm. who knows, and you ask them a question. That's about the same time that with the projection of uh, special theory of relativity, 1905, mm -hmm. we're, we're celebrating the 100th anniversary. But that's the time when you project ahead to weapon systems, mm -hmm. which are part of the technological extension, that we cross the line that if they exist in the world, not an idea, but if they exist in the world, prototypes that are in the or, or, uh, systems in the world, that if they were unleashed in a spasm of hatred like we've done throughout the human experience, mm -hmm. it would apparently mean the end of the whole species. Well, but we crossed that line about 1970. Yeah, and then something 70 else was a major something turning Something else point, happened with that I think. Thing too. It was, it was, and this was a... It, it was a whole notion of what mankind could do. Mm -hmm. Remember, 1969, what happened? Mankind went to the moon. Phone? Just turn it off. Just turn it off. It's all right. It's a nice okay. tune. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Somebody, that's why we were going to, to the moon. We went to the moon 19, in, the, in the summer of 1969. I remember and it well. That was major. That yeah. was a major uh, 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 notion that we've always been talking about it. We've written about it. All of a sudden, all of a sudden wow. Man really went to the moon. I thought technology has so set us this, free. This technology is, <laughs> yeah. is really getting me down. No, that's okay. That's good. Uh, it's all right. Just turn it off. Can you turn it off? Turned it off. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I that's right. But that that's was a right. major. That was a major. That's, that's a good. Just, that's a good just, thing. You just as, take advantage. Just like, as mm -hmm. the Wright brothers when they they flew yeah. the airplane. Well, I would say those two yeah, things. Yeah. Those two events. I would. I would suggest really major. I would. I would suggest in the fullness of time that the going to the moon will be uh, important, it will be a landmark, but it, it will be seen to be far larger, will be that we'd reach the point where we could destroy the species and we'd reach the point in the evolution of affairs of extended technologically, extended consciousness in this part of uh, the evolution of this part of the universe when we crossed the line where we were entering into a phase uh, where we had transcended in our capability scarcity. Scarcity, but one thing is going to happen, and go okay. back to Bucky's uh, and Bucky will be bigger than science, yeah. science yeah. on on technology, and that is the discovery of uh, C60. Yeah, oh, absolutely. I think yeah. to, to me, to, to, I, yeah. I will not be here then, but uh, uh. certainly my grandchildren. Yeah, will. and uh, I don't think it's that, that far off. Only no, your it, grandchildren. It, it is. It is like fantastic. 2030. It's, 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 Mr. Uh, Kurzweil says singularity yeah. is about 2030. 30, and I uh. just think that it's 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 a landmark. Uh, uh, discovery yeah. and uh, absolutely I'm personally so uh, uh, thrilled that uh, that Nobel laureates uh, named it the Buck Mr. Fuller. Absolutely, uh, it was just I thought it was very apropos, but of course I'm slightly biased. Yes, yeah, so uh, you're slightly, and so uh, am I, and so should but, all good uh, in people. In that case, and, and, uh, but it's good to say on this Thanksgiving Day to call these the, the, that. But we got to get. We got about two minutes left, and I promise we sit and before we sat down, mm -hmm. we wanted to say something about. The binary economic thing that you're bringing in mm -hmm. down in in in, car, in, uh, in uh, with the Man River project yeah, and the, the thinking project. of Lewis Kelso. Mm -hmm, exactly. I did a program with Bucky and brought up Lewis Kelso mm -hmm. when we did it. And you think you're latching on to that yourself, or you're I coming think, to understanding we need a, a new East, economic to theory? Have East St. Louis to buy into it, if you want to use that total mm -hmm. uh, notion, is to, to use that as a model. Mm -hmm. Because you have a, a, a group of people that unfortunately feel that they haven't been invited to the table, right. uh, that they've been uh, displaced, and they just uh, uh, have a difficult. So you come up with this notion, well, to get them into the fold, yeah. to have them buy into it is the council model. Marx and Marxism seems not to have worked. No, it is the distribution by I mean, need. Marxism and, and, and communism, what you call it, it doesn't make any sense to me at all. Francis Fukuyama yeah. has written a yeah. book said it's the end of history because we mm -hmm. defeated the Soviet Union's geopolitical yeah. stuff. We've won. Mm -hmm. Everything's fine. But there are still a lot of people, half the world population right. never made a phone call, exactly. living on $2 a day. There's starvation, yeah. all kinds of things, yeah. and yet we have a capability to provide, which we don't have a system, right. system that our politically inherited right. institutional systems and thought pattern in terms of economics are able to allow us to do in order to bring everybody up and, and that's into a liberated this, this pattern. This particular project, the Old Man River, I don't know if you can see yeah. it or not. Let me hold it up did. to the camera. Uh, and the I don't know how I much think, we can see in yeah, detail. Here's, here's a, a little sketch that Bucky had. Yeah. And to me, that's these are a, his sketches. These are his sketches. For Old Man River. For Old Man River. And what I think is so important is that it ties together 
Three most people, yeah. three ideas. Okay. One is Martin Luther King. Okay. It is the American community in America. Right. And the third well, the, is technology. Uh -huh. You know, so it's a whole idea that through technology, man can do what needs to do. Yeah. And and design science. So yeah. when you pull the three of them together, that does something. Yeah. And then something that's very human. Yeah, I think something yeah. that's 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 something that you can touch, which mm -hmm. is difficult for some people mm -hmm. to do, is the Catherine Dunham say, oh wow, let's find something that that everybody can relate to, and that is through music, dance, which is what. Uh, well, if uh, we get freed from all the mundane things that people have to do, which mm -hmm. technology can do with good mm -hmm. design and so forth, we can have a renaissance of the human spirit where everybody's going to be doing what they... And it may be the requirement of the a priori mysterious design yeah, of universal are. mind that we liberate people from the mundane uh, history, the, the, the nightmare that James Jay has mm -hmm. called history. And we may be at a moment of that kind of liberation into a new way where the whole of the world society could be liberated with a sense of ecology. We may be living at a major transformative moment in the evolution of consciousness in this part of the universe. And if we are, Buckminster Fuller was one of our tremendous avatars and pointers, don't, don't you well, think? I, th I think you've just... Or am I reaching too no, far? No, I think you've cl closed the circle, and I, and, and I know our time is up. I yeah, think I'm afraid. A perfect closing of the circle, because mm -hmm. uh, that's exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, it is uh, certainly the, 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 the envelopment of uh, the man's uh, uh, quest for knowledge, mm -hmm. but able to do it in such a way that uh, it is living re instead of weaponry. Right. It is uh, doing more with less. Uh -huh. It is certainly uh, the the notion that mankind can do what they need to do in mm -hmm. the shortest time possible, mm -hmm. without ecological damage and without harm to each other. Right. And that, that was very his, much what yeah. Bucky was all about. He really was. Yeah. And he really right. was. And so whether one realizes it or not. Uh, we meet Bucky every day in our lives. I think, yeah. And whether he wants to put the tag on or not is not as important as the fact that it's there. Just as Time Magazine did say that he was a Michel I mean, he was the Leonardo of of uh, of our time. Mm -hmm. uh, I, indeed, I think he really was. And so, thank you very much for he having me. He may have been I'm really not at all. Uh, My great pleasure. The book is really good, and the work of you. the BFI is the best site. The most significant site on the internet, if you ask my humble opinion, mm -hmm. it's wonderful you're carrying on that tradition. I, I thank you very much for helping and being associated with him. He was uh, the Leonardo for the ages. He really was. I want to. I'm, I'm hoping that too since large a, a, an act, but he he yeah. is really somebody, and particularly the you should pick up on him. And then those political guys, they could begin to maybe start picking up on the on the the Kelso thing. It we might we help hope in that terms happens, of that but side. Since we are so close to Christmas, I'm hoping that, that people will think seriously about getting the book for their children and oh, for good. themselves. Yeah. Uh, this is the pa uh, paperback of the hardback, as mm -hmm. well as Bone but this is the second edition, mm -hmm. which isn't paperback. It's uh, put out by uh, uh, St. Martin's Press. It's good very press. affordable. Yeah. It's being used as a textbook, as a matter of fact, in uh, Stanford University. Uh, Georgetown and, and Harvard University. Very good. Uh, and SIU, of course. Yeah. University. And it could be... It but could it's, it's a very easy read. Right. Uh, and, it's very and, good. It, and it covers the whole gamut. Absolutely. And, and so it's a wonderful Christmas present for your for yourself and for your grandchildren and really for the world. And all for the all the kiddies on the block and everyone Hopefully. on the block. They could do it. And, and also it's available in the, uh, you know, the internet is oh, there absolutely. as the sure. university that Bucky yeah. Fuller would be so happy. Yeah, just be thank you. We could talk for hours. Thank you for thank having you. me. You know, like, thank you for a, a very, pleasure. very well-led life, helping a very significant person oh. along in his work. I appreciate that very much for everything you've done. Well, and all your pleasure. colleagues at Buckminster Fuller Institute, one and all should get associated with that. It's a major site on the, on the internet you. and well, in the Akashic my, record. My of, privilege to, to, to be with Bucky, and so it was really... My, my privilege. So we can wish uh, one and all a happy Thanksgiving I, and this I year 2005. Indeed. He was born in 1895. 95. So he would have been now, uh, what, can you do the math for me? 105. How much? 105. 105, yeah. So this is the year. So thank you really very much for all your work and for the book. And thank you for We you. thank you for viewing. Happy Thanksgiving, one and all. That's it for now. Once more, one more time, Thomas. Thank you very much for coming in. I know you got a schedule to keep and so forth, but Please tune in. We'll be coming back again tomorrow. That's it for this program. One more time. Thank you, Thomas, and thank you, Buckminster Fuller.